Welcome to the Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. Hello everyone, I'm Praveen Kumar Gogla, working as a lead research associate for Cloud for Miracle Innovation Labs. In this video, I would like to talk about the benefits of higher availability and disaster recovery and will show you a simple demo on how to configure your workloads for higher availability and disaster recovery using Microsoft Azure. Here is our agenda for today. So at first I will be talking about Microsoft Azure and some of its service offerings. So also I will be talking a bit about Microsoft Azure's load balancer, external load balancer which is nothing but a traffic manager and then higher availability and disaster recovery, a sample architecture and then followed by a live demo. Azure is a Microsoft cloud computing platform. It's like a bunch of physical infrastructure that is deployed around the world which basically runs on network, fiber, and the servers that actually host all the services. So here uh, we are having a set of uh, services. So within that we have virtual machines, uh, which are an IAS service allowing you to deploy and manage VMs inside a virtual network. So we also have service fa fabric, so which is a distributed system platform that can run in many environments, including Azure and on-premises. So service fabric is an orchestrator of microservices across a cluster of machines. Azure also provides container services which lets us create and configure and manage clusters of VMs that are pre-configured to run a configured applications. So we also have Azure Functions so which is a managed functions as a service offering from Microsoft. So instead of creating compute instances and deploying code to other instances, you simply deploy your code and the services automatically runs it. You don't need to administer the compute resources. Azure provides support for bo both uh, SQL and NoSQL databases. We have our uh, data stored into tables, tables, queues, files, blobs, etc. And then coming to identity and access management services. So we have Azure AD, so which is used for synchronizing on-premises directories and enables single sign-on. Multi-factor authentication which adds security for your data and applications without adding inconvenience for users. Azure Developer Tools helps us to easily build, deploy, diagnose, and manage multiple platforms, scalable applications and services. So coming to the developer tools, we have VSTS, so which is a service for teams to share their code and track work progresses and, and for shipment as well for the software. Azure Dev Test Labs, so which is used for quickly create environments using reusable templates and artifacts. App Insights helps us to detect and diagnose issues in your web apps and services. We also have Hockey App, which is used to deploy mobile apps and then collect feedbacks and crash reports and monitor uses. For management and security, so these management tools help us to build and manage, monitor all Azure products in a single unified console. So we have schedulers to run your own jobs on simple and complex uh, recurrence scheduling. And for security, we have Azure Key Vault, which is used to safeguard and maintain control of keys and other securities, and then other secret keys also. And coming to the security center, so which unifies security management and enables advanced threat protection across hybrid cloud workloads. So real-time data stream processing from millions of IoT devices is done by Stream Analytics. And then HD Insight services used to provide cloud Hadoop, R servers, and strong clusters, etc. From IoT, we have Event Hubs, so which is used to receive telemetry from millions of devices. So we have IoT Hubs used to connect, monitor, and control billions of IoT assets and so on and so forth, service offerings are provided by Microsoft. So moving on to the next slide, we have Azure Traffic Manager, which is a load balancer service, which helps us to uh, balance our load across regions. It improves uh, the availability of important applications by monitoring your Azure services, or external websites and services, and it automatically directs your customers to a new location when there is a failure. Basically helps us to reduce our app downtime, so makes your applications more responsive and improves content delivery time by directing your customers to Azure or an external location with the lowest network latency. It also helps us to direct your customer traffic to distribute it across multiple locations such as multiple cloud services or multiple Azure websites. It is a popular option for on-premises scenarios including migrate to cloud or failover to cloud. Moving on to the next slide, we have higher availability and disaster recovery architecture. So here I am having two websites which are running in East US region and two websites which are running in North Europe region. I have also a VM in East US region and also a VM in North Europe region as well. 
so when i hit this url east us web app 1 url from east us vm so then the one which is nearer to it will be responding so these applications these all four of these applications are associated or directed to a traffic manager when we hit this traffic manager url from east us vm then the one which is nearest to it will be responding the one which is nearest and the active one will be responding so at first east us web app 1 will be responding if the east us web app 1 is down then east us web app 2 will be responding to the east us vm so if all the applications inside this east us is down then the applications which are hosted in other regions will be responding like in the north europe web app 1 or web app 2 will be responding so in the same way when you hit the url from north europe vm1 then the north europe applications the one the applications which are deployed in north europe region will be responding so when we hit this uh, same traffic manager url from this vm from this user vm the one which is nearer to us will be responding so once these all are done here the red indicates that these applications are down so east us web app 1 and east us web app 2 and the north europe web app 1 are down so when you hit this url traffic manager url from east us vm1 from east us vm so now the north europe web app 2 will be responding in the same way when you hit this uh, traffic manager url from north europe vm so then this north europe vm uh, web app 2 will be responding in the same way it will be responding when all the all the applications are done only the one which is active will be responding and now let me start with the demo we have two portals provided by microsoft one is the management portal which is a old portal and here we have the new portal which is nothing but a preview portal so we can work with uh, both the portals here i'll be using both the portals simultaneously to work with our demo and the major difference which you can see uh, within this portal here inside this management portal the resources are grouped based upon the services uh, like you can see here virtual mission so all the virtual mission services all the virtual mission resources can be seen inside this virtual mission tab or if you click on this cloud services you can see the group of uh, cloud services irrespective of which application it belongs to but whereas coming to this preview portal we can make a group of the resources using resource group that is let us say that if you have an application or if you are working with a project so you can group all those resources which belongs to that particular application or that particular project into one resource group irrespective of this uh, what are the services and which location they are deployed at. but you all can make into a single resource group the services which work for that particular project or for that particular application which belongs to so inside this management portal i have three vms running two are in deployed two i have deployed in east east us so i named them as mss east us vm1 and mss east us vm2 and the next one i deployed in north europe region so i named it as mss n europe vm1 so this east us vm1 and east us vm2 are deployed inside a single cloud service so this cloud service is nothing but it's something like a container which holds these virtual machines so it acts like a load balancer so when you hit this cloud service url of this east us vm1 it will redirect the traffic between the east us vm1 and east us vm2 so i have two cloud service associated uh, with those three vms uh, i will be checking it out mss east us vm1 when i hit this url i have deployed is iss web server on all three of the machines and this is the landing page of that is server you can see this it's a request coming from mss east us vm2 here you can see the cloud service name also mss east us vm one dot cloud app dot net when you hit this url continuously the request uh, you can see it from mss east vm one also you will be getting a request you can see for the same url we have two vms associated with it see here uh, for this url we are getting a request from mss east us vm one the same url i am getting a request from mss east us vm two from another server i am getting this request so when you hit this north europe vm1 we only get uh, the request from the vm which is deployed in north europe vm1 so i have only one vm located in north europe region one, so i will be getting one request from this right now what i will do is i will associate this this is the internal load balancer which is associated by default 
uh, when we keep uh, the VMs, the services inside one cloud service, the internal load balancer will automatically work. But in order to do it, like the across regions, we can balance our load using Azure Traffic Manager. So I have one instance of Azure Traffic Manager. I have already created it. It's named as MSS Traffic Manager 1. So now I will go to this endpoint. I will add these endpoints. I will add these cloud services to this Traffic Manager. MSS Endpoint 1. Use this as the target resource as the cloud service. I will be selecting this East US VM1 cloud service. And then I will add. And also I will add one more instance which is in North Europe region. MSS Endpoint 2. I will select this North Europe VM1. And I will click OK. Now these two endpoints are enabled with this traffic manager. Now we get this traffic manager URL. When we hit this URL, this this will redirect the traffic in between our endpoints, the associated endpoints inside our East US VM1, I mean inside our East US VM1 and VM2, as well as North Europe. In between these three VMs, our request will be redirect. So right now, when I hit this URL, I am getting a hit from MSS East US VM1. I give it a hit continuously. Now you can see I am getting a request from MSS East US VM2. I will go to this traffic manager to check for the next one. Like the request should be, I should be getting from MSS North Europe VM1. So here these many requests I can't provide, right? I will disable one of the endpoint. I will disable this cloud service in East US VM1. So that only one endpoint is enabled, so which is a North Europe VM1. So now I will be getting a request from North Europe VM1. Yes, you can see this. MSS North Europe VM1. I am getting a request from this. With this demo, you can understand how you can set up your higher availability architecture and disaster recovery architecture. So this higher availability typically protects against local issues such as application failures and the system level problems. While well, disaster recovery protects against large outages such as data center failure due to natural disasters fire, electricity failures, or physical attacks. So the major benefit uh, for an end user when an infrastructure is built on higher availability is that the organization will never experience any downtime with a critical system failures. So even though uh, any of this, like the any of these endpoint is down, it will be getting a request from some other endpoint which is associated to it. So applications and data will be always responsive and available to work with. So 99% availability means the downtime period over a year is like around 3.65 days. So in case of higher availability, that is 5.9, like 99.999, then the downtime will be calculated as 5.26 minutes per year. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. For more on innovation, please visit miraclesoft.com slash thelabs.